Planet Zoo has been rated E10 plus by the ESRB for crude humor, mild blood, and mild violence. It is generally suitable for people aged 10 years and up. From the turreted castle and Main Street to Monte Cristo Island and Kukwana Land, Bartholomew Zenon's Zenon Land is protected by the Night Sheriff. Day and night, he is burdened by a witch's curse to be aware of all that live and play within the massive fantasy theme park. Now an attack on the park by a monster hunter who knows far too much threatens everything, guests, staff, and fellow supernaturals taking refuge in the park. The night sheriff must scramble to uncover not only the source of the threat, but secrets of the park of which even he was not aware. If he doesn't, he may be doomed. The park may be doomed. Even the world may be doomed. And that's a lot of doom. Get your copy at Amazon.com today. Hey kids, how you doing? Welcome back to the Emerald Deep Zoological Park and Planet Zoo. My name's Jack. If this is your first time here, welcome aboard. If you've been here before, welcome back. Either way, thanks for watching. I do appreciate it. The zoo, as usual, is thriving. Um, we've occasionally had overcrowding problems, especially with some of our exhibit animals, but that's pretty much the only difficulty that we seem to be having at the time. Um, we have just started, if it, for those of you who haven't been watching the last couple episodes, we have just started the South American jungle portion of our zoo. Now, right now, it's not got a lot of people in it. I'll be honest. I mean, look, look, look at this. Not a lot of people. But that's going to change because South America has jaguars and uh, cougars and other popular animals. But today, what we're going to do is we are going to add the Cuvier's Dwarf Cayman. Let me check on something real quick. Uh, the Cuvier's Dwarf Cayman is the smallest of all the crocodilian species. It's only like a foot long, maybe two feet long at the uh, most, and that's as an adult. They are predators, yes, but they tend to eat like small pieces of fish and things like that. You know, they, they, they're they not the kind of crocodile who takes down antelope, is what I'm trying to say. Um, and, uh, they, you know, they're South America. Ooh, fierce little beastie. And you look at it and you go, wow, that, that looks dangerous. Except then you think about the fact that it's smaller than your average chihuahua. Can it bite you and hurt you? Sure. Is it going to be eating you alive? No. So, uh, let's see. It needs 182 square meters of land. It requires uh, 79 meter, meters square of uh, water. It does not have a deep water requirement for diving. The fence is grade 2, 4.95 feet, so basically just over a meter. Um, one to two in a group. Let's see. Aggression level equals dominance. Yeah. 50 years. They live for 50 years, by the way. So uh, we're going to um, put in a habitat. And my idea for it, I mean, with the... Uh, oh, come on. Turn, 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 turn. Bring it back. There we go. For the saltwater crocodiles, basically my idea was that we would, you know, have a walkover. Um, there's a zoo local to me that has a huge alligator slash crocodile pool and you walk over it and you were literally over the water on, you know, so that's what I did. Um, with the saltwater crocodiles, it made, you know, made sense. It, you know, created an interesting habitat. I think it worked out, but that's not what I'm going to get. Um, that is not what I am going to do this time. I used to speak English. I used to be, I really, I used to be so fluent in English. So anyway, let me, uh, let me draw this path out just a touch. Six, I want it six meters wide. That's five, six we go, okay. And I'm just gonna do this just a touch. That way it's just a little further out because we're gonna put the habitat here. Now what I want to do 
is we're going to lead with the water area. So let me get a measurement, a means of measurement. Um, it doesn't really matter, so... Yeah, okay, here we go. All right. Let's call it that. All right. Slide it back away from the path just a little. And the reason I put this here is because this is going to be basically the width of the water section of the habitat. The width of a four meter wall, effectively. And we'll put another one here just to keep things balanced. Yeah, that'll work. So. Before I get too much further in this, um, again, I would like to thank you very much for watching my content. I'm going to turn this over to the, uh, uh, the, the time lapse soon. And you guys, I will talk to you once I am done. See you in a minute.
Barring some minor problems, this is our caiman habitat. Right now it of course only has two of the animals in it. Uh, that's perfectly fine. And uh, it's got plenty of room, plenty of places to hide, and plenty of places to swim. You know, here, hey, here's one now. Um, you know, the animals are doing fine. The people are beginning to come and look and see, which is drawing people down to see the monkeys and see the other plants and all. Uh, it looks good and it fits into the it fits into the area pretty well. Um, this path here is also going to be used to bring people back into this area, and I of course will be filling in an animal this way, and it'll probably the path will probably come around here to connect. Uh, so yeah, uh, if you liked what you saw there. Please hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and if you do subscribe, hit that notification bell. Tell me what you think in the comments below. I do have one persistent problem, and that is, for whatever reason, there's no vendors here. And every time I drop a vendor, it, uh, every time I drop a vendor, they just walk past. So you know what? We're going to do this. We're going to do that. going to remove this particular food cell entirely. It'll just be a memento and a drink stand. See? End of the problem. Alright, what I want to do, I think... I'm going to do a little adjustment here real quick. Alright. Let's make that six across. And we'll put it here and run it down in front of this hill, like so, and then the smaller path can just run right into it like that. So yeah, um, I'll be honest, I can't remember what the next habitat is. I believe it's the Capybara, but don't quote me on that. I, think I could easily be wrong. So. I hope you join me there anyway, even though I'm, I'm trying to think of what is next on the schedule and can't come up with anything. Uh, I think the zoo's coming along. On, I did it again. I think the zoo's coming along just fine. I think we're developing it really well. It's got still got lots of room for animals. We're only just begun the South American portion. And uh, yeah, it's turning into, it, this is turning into a fantastic zoo. It's definitely a zoo that I would love to visit in real life. So guys, uh, you know, please join me. I look forward to having you. Yep. Bye-bye.